All right, so we're back. So the first thing we got to do on these is I'm going to lay down a coat of gloss black on all of Aquaman's suit. So his, his hands, his legs, and his torso. And you're wondering why are you putting down black if it's going to be metallic. So when you do a, typically when you do a metallic treatment or a candy treatment, you want to gloss black down first because it helps the metallic that you put on next just sparkle a little bit more. This makes it more reflective. It's kind of like when you do an all clad chrome treatment. What you're doing is when you see the chrome, the really shiny chrome, what you're actually seeing is the, um, the gloss paint underneath the chrome. And you're basically just, the chrome actually goes on kind of translucent. So you're seeing through the chrome and seeing the black paint. So uh, that's what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna mix up a good amount of this Mr. Color GX Black. So I'm going to need quite a bit of it, so I'm going to mix up basically like two bottles of it. Whatever I don't use, I'll pour back in here. I'm going to put on a good two or three coats, and I'll have to let it dry for a while. And when I do, when I want to get it really glossy, I over thin it. So typically, a lot of people ask me my thinning ratios. For GX paints, like my standard about thinning ratio, it's two parts thinner to one part paint. For this, I'm going to over thin it a little bit. I wanted to go on really smooth. So this is going to be like more like a two and a half, maybe three to one. And I just put it in this bottle so I can clean out that bottle. And then we'll mix it up here. Probably what I'll do is I'll spray the the hands out here. I'll show you what I do, and I'll spray the other parts in the booth because um, it'll just create a lot of overspray. And I don't want to, I, don't, I don't like to spray too much of this out, this stuff out in the open because the fumes they do get a little. Um, I got to turn on my airbrush. Be right back. My compressor. The switch to it's in the paint room. Should put maybe a switch out here. That'd be handy. Okay. Let's see if I have a clean airbrush. I don't know. Can use that last time? I'm using it. Yeah. Okay. Like, again, I got way more paint than I probably need, but I'd rather have too much than have to stop and mix more in the middle of what I'm doing. Okay. So the trick to getting this to go on is glossy as possible is first over thin it a little bit and then next we're going to put it on pretty light at the very beginning and then we'll slick it out as we go so first cut's pretty light and this will tell me if I need to thin it more or not that off because you'll just be pushing it around your airbrush and you'll be chasing it <laughs> and that's no fun everything. All right, that's it for the first coat on that guy Really light, 
not trying to cover it. I'm going to have to turn this a little more, I can tell. By the atomization. Try to pump up the air pressure a little bit too. A little low. You can increase air pressure to help atomization. I typically shoot it around 20. That's kind of my, my standard air pressure for 90% of everything. First cut on that guy. So this stuff dries pretty quick, so it's to the point now where I can put on the other coat on the other hand, and I am going to thin this a little bit more. I feel like I could I have a lot of paint mixed up. Hopefully, I have enough jars to pour it into. I do. I have enough jars to pour the excess into. Okay, this next coat is going to be pretty wet. That's about right. I'm going to spray the paint that I have in my airbrush out. Alright, next coat's going to be pretty wet. You can see all the overspray I'm getting out here just from these two parts. So I'm going to just do these two out here and do the rest in the paint booth. But you'll you get the idea of the technique as far as getting it to gloss out and, and stuff. If you get all every area. second coat. So typically what I'll do is I'll do one kind of light coat and then I'll do two wet coats and um, it should be pretty pretty shiny. Now this sculpt has a lot of texture on it so that'll just by nature knock down the gloss a little bit but Going pretty slow, overlapping about 50%. Keep a wet edge. Two coats on that guy. So what I like to do is let that second coat dry for a few minutes and then put on um, the last wet coat. I see a little spot here I missed on the previous coats. We're going to hit it again. Actually it's a little, a little speck of dust. So I'm going to just wipe it out and So we're going to pause for a few minutes and we'll come back and put on the last one coat. Alrighty, we waited a little bit and we're going to put on our third and final coat of the gloss black.
Let me get the key first. Going on pretty wet. So right now I'm using this Mr. Color Normal Thinner. Uh, I, I used to use their leveling thinner, um, but if you just over thin this stuff a little bit, you kind of get the same effect. The leveling thinner just has a retarder in it, so it slows the drying process of the paint, so it has a chance to slick out more. Um, I haven't used leveling thinner in a long time. I just will use just a normal thinner. Okay. Second coat on this guy. Because when I go in the air booth, I'll use my big I watt HPTH um, trigger gun for the bigger parts. Get pretty bad out here, so I don't like to spray this too much out on the bench. All right, so that's it for the hands. So I'm going to go spray the torso and the legs and the belt and all that stuff with gloss black and then uh, we'll come back and lay down the metallic. Okay, so I sprayed everything gloss black. That's what that looks like. Really, really nice. I went ahead and spray, uh, sprayed the trident and uh, what else did I spray? His belt, um, the chain, anything that's going to have metallic I sprayed gloss black. Here are the legs. So I'm going to let this all dry for maybe 30, 30, 45 minutes because I put it on pretty wet. Um, here are the hands up that they've dried for about 30 minutes. Looking really good. So after about 30, 45 minutes, we'll uh, put it on the base. Um, I also sprayed a bunch of knives. So we're going to play with some colors uh, and see what we get after this dries for about 30, 45 minutes. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do, these have all dried for a little while, I'm going to spray on a coat of uh, Mr. Color 104 Gun Chrome. You can see I've got a bunch of knives here painted up, gloss black, so we're going to use a coat of this. Right in camera, but I think it's gonna look pretty good. So I'm gonna do that on like two of these. Even though it says gun chrome, you're actually going to get a chrome look and you're going to get a really nice kind of bright silver. Looking at a different color to see if uh, I might want to use it, but I think this gun chrome is going to be good. It's a nice, bright, kind of silvery color. So again, I'm going to coat um, a couple of knives in this. I hope I have enough. I guess I got three, three bottles of it. 
You put on light. Except the rest of this. So the same thing. I'm gonna basically just pour it in here and then use the cup for thinner. So I'm going to mix this up and then I'm going to start base coating uh, Aquaman himself. I'll be back in a minute. Alright, so I'm going to base coat Aquaman in this uh, gun chrome. Again, I'll probably do the hands out here and I'll do the rest of the body in the booth. I'm just going to put this on real light and fill it up slowly. When you do this step, it's very even. So we're going to be doing candies, and everything's got to be done all the same. So we'll do the rest of everything like that, and then we'll come back. Okay, so got everything base coated in that gun chrome. It's dried for a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the color for the torso first. And I think I got the perfect base color. This is Mr. Color GX111. Uh, it says clear gold on it, but it's a kind of really nice warm yellowy gold. Because um, we're going to do, go for the comic color scheme. And that part of his outfit is, um, if I can get to the image. Do, 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 do. My phone always rings. So I'm kind of going for this look here. So it's a little bit of orange in there. So what I was going to do is base cut with this and then shadow with orange and blend it in. So let's see what that looks like. I've already kind of got this mixed up in there. Let's mix them up over here. Now this is this is this clear gold. I'm not sure how translucent this is, to be honest. This thing looks to be about right. Yeah, it looks pretty clear. I'm gonna try this on the spoons first. That's why I spray these spoons.
It looks to be about the right base tone. So we kind of got this color going on. And if I look at that, my reference, I'll get some orange on there. Should be just about right. So I'm gonna let this. I'm gonna hit this with a hair dryer. orange here right. some clear orange I think I've got some in here that's already kind of mixed up let's see I'm not sure how thin this is Clear colors are hard to get thin because <laughs> you just kind of have to thin them until you, they go through their airbrush the way you want. So I'm just going to put a little bit in my airbrush. I'm going to kind of start at the bottom and fade this up and see what kind of look I get. Yep, that's going to be it. So what I'll do is I'll base coat the torso in that clear gold. You probably can't see anything because it's getting such a high reflection from my lights. And then I'll hit the shadows really kind of hard with this color and then fade it up into the highlights. I'm going to bring my exposure down a little bit so you can see this. So I think that's just about right looking at the reference that I'm using and then I'll just miss orange over it and it'll be kind of a nice yellow orange color. So let me clean this back out. And I'll go with the gold on the torso. I think I need a thin neck your orange a little bit. It's a little thick. I just took it out of the bottle. Sometimes I have stuff that's already pretty thin um, from previous jobs and I don't think that was pretty thin. Alright, so I'm going to bottle everything up here so I don't spill anything. Because I'm known to do that every once in a while. This is one of the few cases where I'm testing colors. Usually I kind of know exactly what I'm doing, but I'm spraying some colors here that I'm not used to spraying, so that's why I'm testing them. So I'm going to go over this with that clear gold. I should probably go do this in the booth. Um, I'll go do this in the booth. And this takes a little bit to cover up. So I'm going to go do this in the booth and we'll come back and we'll do some shadowing. Okay, so I got this base coated in that clear gold. It took a little while to try to get it as evenly as possible. So now we're going to go in. I got my clear orange mixed up in my airbrush. And we're going to go and do the shading and blending. So I went ahead and thinned that clear orange a little bit. And uh, I'll do some of this on camera and then some of it I'll do off. So the first thing I'll do is go hit all the muscles. Pressure down a little bit. 
It's hard to see the muscle definition in sculpts like this when they have a costume on. Exposure down a little bit. You can see a lot of reflection, so this is pretty, very reflective. Hope you can see what I'm doing. I've got this clear orange thin pretty pretty thin, so I'm just building up real slow so I don't get it to pool. It'll pool real quick if you're not careful. The more of these I paint, the more I get familiar with anatomy. So like sometimes on a sculpt like this where it's really hard to see the anatomy, I kind of know where just to put it. Um, so then, you know, the more stuff, you get more familiar with muscles and where they're supposed to be. I'm going to hit the muscles really hard, the shadows, and then when I'm happy with those, I'm going to miss this clear orange over the whole piece. Kind of get to blend and tint the whole thing a little bit warmer. Because with the clear colors, it's not that it gets darker, it gets more vibrant. So anywhere I add more clear orange, it's just, the orange just gets more vibrant. So that's kind of how you're doing with the shading on these, when you're doing these candy colors. I'm just seeing a little pooling there, so I'm going to stop. What's that? That sit for a second, I got a little too heavy.
was handling this too soon. I gotta go back and re hit those spots because the paint was still wet and I took it off. So I need to pause for a little while. I need to fix this spot. I'll come back. Okay, so I fixed that spot that I messed up and I've been working on the muscles here. <clears throat> it's looking pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm backing off a little bit uh, with the airbrush and I'm just kind of blending these in a little bit just to soften them up and to kind of tint some of the other areas a little bit orange. Like here on the pecs, I'm kind of spraying up. Blend it in a little bit. Same thing on the abs. And if I see another muscle, I'll kind of go in there and hit it. This is looking pretty good. It's about there on this, and then we'll just dry really well. And then I'll probably give it a satin finish. Uh, I thought about doing high gloss, but no, I'm not gonna do that. I think a satin will look good. So like right here on the bicep, I'm going from where I sprayed the shadow and kind of spraying up to fade it up so it blends. Trying to maintain some of this gold as a highlight. I will here in a second, just a real light missing the orange on the whole thing. But I want to do some more of this kind of blending before I do that. back. The back's just about there. I've been working on that for a little bit. Like down here, straight up to give it shape. There are a few little imperfections in the, in the sculpt. They're kind of minor, so I'm not worried about them. You really don't notice these little itty bitty things until you start painting. A little muscle there, so I hit that very lightly. The hardest part to get to is under the arm on this side because it's down. Now we're going to do, okay, let's see how much paint I got in there. I've got plenty. Now I'm going to back off. I'll put on my airbrush a little bit. Just really lightly missed on. Miss over the whole thing. I need to go back and do some more of the muscle I can. And just keep missing it on until I get the look I want. Muscles look a little drawn on, so that's why I'm going in and blending them back. 
a little bit more so they're not so contrasty. And this one because I need to get a little bit more because it's going in the light. Hit it again. So depending on how you look at this piece, the color kind of shifts a little bit. It's kind of cool. Kind of shifts from gold to silver to orange, so it's kind of neat. You can different variations in tone as you move it around. So I'm gonna do this until I'm happy, and then I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit, and then I'm gonna hit it with a satin and let that dry really well. Um, the only other part on this would be the necklace, or like the, not the necklace, but the, I guess this collar. And I'll probably do that. I need to go look at the reference. I think it's just gold. But I need to um, mask it off and paint that a slightly different color. But this is looking pretty good. So um, I'm going to keep blending it until I'm happy. It's almost there. It's, again, you have to turn these pieces a lot in the light because of the texture and the sculpt. It's hard to see everything, so it's real important that you constantly turn it to see all the details. See if I can turn my exposure down because it's a really shiny camera. So that's kind of like what we got. It looks really contrasting in camera in person. It's much more, it's a much softer look. So uh, I'm going to do this a little bit longer and then uh, I'm going to let it dry, seal it, and then we'll work on the legs. Okay, so while I wait for that yellow orange to dry, I mixed up a custom green. Um, uh, I did one bottle of the Mr. Color GX211 metallic yellow green and with one bottle of uh, Mr. Color number 77 metallic green and I got this really nice uh, shade of metallic green sprayed all of the hands and the legs and I'm going in and doing what I did with the orange. I'm just highlighting or adding shadows with uh, clear green. So I may have to actually, um, I've already started this hand. I'm not sure if you guys can see, it's going to be really reflective in the camera. A little more thinner, I think. Not quite thin enough. Um, I mean, since I've already started this one, I'm going to go ahead and do it on all of these. And I might go back and add just a touch of um, black to this. And then go back and do the shadows again. It's not quite getting dark enough. But we'll see. dry tip there, it didn't have enough thinner. But again, just going in here. With the clear green and the shadows. Probably can't see anything that's going on. It's just so reflective. But what it's doing is just adding some vibrance to the shadows. So it's hard to see. I'm mean, going to do this to all the parts and then we'll see when you go back and add a little black to it. Okay, so I went through and I did that shading on the legs and the hands. Uh, again, it looks a little contrasting in camera. So I'm gonna go back and do it again. I added just a little bit of smoke uh, to my clear green because I wanted to get a little darker tone here. So let's see what this does. Yeah. I'm gonna go back and do these again. Should be going pretty quick. There we go, all the shadows pretty much established. Just a darker green. I wasn't seeing enough contrast. 
uh, for my liking. So. Now we're getting a little, a little deeper tone. I'm gonna go back and go through them all again, and then I'll come back and look. And then what I'll do is I'll mist on some just clear green by itself, and then we'll look at it. All right, so I went and I finished the shading, and I misted on some clear green on top of that. And it'll just dry for a little bit. It's like a little punchy in camera. But you can see all shading really well on the camera. Uh, it's a little, it's more subtle in person. <laughs> uh, we're gonna just dry a little bit. I'm gonna hit this with a satin finish and take a look at that. So I'm gonna go satin finish the uh, upper torso because that's had a good hour or so to dry. And um, we'll see what the satin finish does to this. It's gonna knock it down just a little bit. Hopefully everything will blend together a little bit. All right, so while the satin coat dries on the so the legs and the hands everything looks good I'm really happy with it I think it's gonna look nice once it dries down I'm gonna work on uh, some of these other parts so I'm gonna try to work on the belt a little bit and uh, these little jewels that go in his shirt and um, the necklace the necklace broke on me actually one second So I had this on his neck and I went to go take it off and it broke, it's super fragile. So there's no way to glue this back together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint it and then I'm gonna put it on him. And then hopefully I can, once it's on him again, I can tack glue it again. Um, Cause there's no way it's gonna, there's no surface area. I wish this was a wire instead of uh, resin, but they made it out of resin instead of wire. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, Cause if I glue it, you gotta be able to kind of stretch it out to get it to go in. So I'm gonna paint it and then we'll deal with it. So these little gems, little jewels, I already painted gloss black earlier. So now I'm going to hit them with a little bit of this chrome again, gun chrome. And then we're gonna do some candies on them. You guys see what color they're supposed to be. Actually, this is silver, sorry. So, Mr. Color Silver. Like so, got him on toothpicks. The trim goes goes gold, so I have to paint the metal the candies first, seal that. So I probably won't be able to paint the trim until tomorrow. So I really gotta let that dry really well before I go in there and try to. Maybe I could probably hand paint it. If I'm careful. Let me do that. Okay, there's that. Need to let those dry for a few minutes. Oops. Ah. Damn it, I'm out of, of foam blocks. I need to go buy a new foam block. My ones I had finally were beyond use. I think we're gonna gloss coat these, like super high gloss with automotive clear. I'm gonna put these in my little brush holder over here so I don't get damaged while I, damn it. <laughs> it's one of those days, guys. That'd be further along, but I keep bumping wet paint and it's really pissing me off. Some days just don't go very well. This has kind of been one of those days. I thought it'd be further along. Um, so on the belt, I was noticing some pretty significant scratches from where I did my repair yesterday. So I'm sanding those out um, with some just some 2000 grit sandpaper. And then I'm going to re-hit this edge again with um, some... Um, gloss black and I think we're gonna do this in um, gold 
So it'll be a nice, it won't be the exact same color as the outfit. It'll be a gold. Let me look at the reference, but I think it's a, it's gold. So let me pull that up again real quick. Da, 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 da. So in this, it's all one color. I'm not sure if I like that. Um, I don't know. I mean, if I want to try to stay accurate to that, that's what I should do. So uh, on the prototype, on the on the factory painted pieces, the belt matches the top of the shirt. I don't like that. In the comic, I've got that kind of orange going on top, and then it's gold a gold belt. So maybe we'll just stick with that, and I'll do some shading in there so it's not just a flat and gold. So maybe we'll do that. Uh, we'll take a look at it. All right, so I gotta go wash this again, and then um, I can respray some black paint on that where I sanded. Hopefully, it'll be okay. It should be. I didn't sand a. I didn't. The, I didn't go down to a fine enough sandpaper yesterday when I did this. I sanded down the. Um, the putting stuff so after the paint dried and shrunk a little bit you can see all the sanding scratches so that's why I'm doing this that should be pretty good all right so I'm gonna re-hit this with gloss back black and we'll come back. I was painting with that recording so I'm working on these gems and I'm gonna kind of go with what they had on the factory paint uh, it looked like this little triangular one was green so I'm doing a candy green on it and then we're going to hit this with my automotive clear and let it dry overnight and then we'll paint the, the trim. So there's that. I can make it even a nice dark emerald green. So it doesn't match the pants exactly. Pants and gloves. There we go. So we're going to let that dry really well. Probably can't see it in camera because I can't focus that close. Uh, we're going to do this one kind of like a ruby red. And this one, I'm not sure what color it's going to go, but I'm going to do like a blue because the necklace goes light blue. So I'm going to go get those colors. Alright, so I've got some clear red on my airbrush. I need to thin a little more. Yeah, let me thin this a little bit. That's probably too much. Here we go. I'll make this nice and deep and red too. Pretty vibrant. Let that dry for a while. Can't do the trim till tomorrow because I'm going to put an automotive clear on those. And I'm also going to put automotive clear on the Trident that I've got sprayed in gloss black. I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try to do it uh, gold chrome. We're going to go for it like a gold chrome look. It's just a very tedious process. Lots of steps. Okay, so for the other gem, I'm going to do clear blue on it. This really doesn't, this blue is, oh, it's kind of a weird blue. Actually, this might be the perfect blue for this. This is one that goes in the middle of the necklace. that. 
need to let that dry. So by the time I'm ready to clear coat those, I can clear coat the other parts. Okay. All right. Now. I'm going to get some sky blue and paint this necklace because those go like a baby blue. I've got a color here called sky blue. So I'll paint the whole thing and then later I'll go back and paint hand paint the, the trim and the, the chain part. So this blue is just for the stones in the middle. I should have had this on the clip. That would have been a smart thing to do. I don't always do the smart thing. In here. Let those dry for a while, then I'll seal them, and then I can uh, hand paint the rest of it carefully. So that's it for the jewelry for now. He does have a chain, a um, mixed media chain. I sprayed it um, gloss black earlier, and I'll probably just do that with Mr. Color Gold, maybe similar to the belt here. Oh, I meant to get that. One second. I'm thinking for the belt I do this, Mr. Metallic Gold. This is a really nice shade of gold. I'll, I'll, I'll paint it and I'll see what it looks like next to everything. Maybe a little dark. Uh, I could do. Sorry, I'm in front of the camera. Where is it? Er, looking for a. This, this is warmer. Oh, because that's red gold. I don't want red gold. Hold on one second. I grabbed the wrong one. this up. This is Mr. Color number nine gold, which is a really pretty gold. I use this a lot on things. He's a little thinner. This bottle hasn't been opened in years. So it's kind of this color. I'm not sure. That might, actually that might look kind of good next to it. This is a little warmer. This is a little colder. Color. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Mr. Number Nine. I just dipped this in the stick and look, looked at it next to the torso. So um, these don't won't mix, but the Mr. Color is better, I think. I think it goes better with the other colors I got going on. I need to open up a new bottle of thinner. I'm 
it in. So this paint's a couple years old. It never hasn't been never been open. So it's all solidifying the bottom. I put a little thinner in it to kind of reactivate it. So we're going to get this thinned out and shake it and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I think I have a plan. I, I was going to try to get all this painted today, but uh, I don't think it's going to happen because uh, of a few things I want to do. I want to spray this with the new Mr. Color number 9 gold. What I think I want to do is spray this like this. I'm going to let it dry for a little while. And then I think I want to silly putty off the center part and put some of that clear gold on top of this. looks like on the torso. Hopefully this is dry enough. I can kind of mess with it right now. So I'll put that on. It actually doesn't look too bad. I like it. But what I want to do, I'm going to do that. I'm gonna make the belt two tone. So we keep the center part of this gold color. And then I'm gonna make the trim a little bit brighter. Good covers there. I'm also going to paint this emblem gold to match this the center. I'm kind of taking a little artistic freedom here. I hope I can do so. I am using the comic that artwork, the specific artwork to go by. But I'm gonna just add a little more variation to it, I think. So that way when this is on, we get this nice gold that I'm gonna put on maybe either put on some of that clear gold that did on the torso. And it won't be the same color as the torso, it'll be slightly different because it's going on top of this and it's not gonna get shaded orange. So we'll let this dry for I don't know, 30, 40 minutes. And then I can silly putty that and do that. And also I think I'll use this gold um, maybe around the, actually what I'm gonna do, I'm thinking out loud here, around the neck is a collar. Um, I was thinking about doing the collar 
that gold too to match the belt. I think that would be a nice contrast. So I'm gonna let this dry for another hour or so because it's got a lot of paint on it. I don't want to rush this. Um, the ass looking good. You see the back? <laughs> it's looking really contrasting camera. <laughs> Super punchy. It's not like that in person. It's a little more um, subtle. Uh, I may go back and blend this a little bit on camera. It's really punchy. A little too contrasty, but overall I'm kind of digging it. So I'm thinking I may do the collar the same way with the gold. Uh, maybe just gold. I don't know. I'm still thinking. All right. So what can I do next while we're doing that? Uh, what was I going to do? That's painted. That's painted. Um, I guess technically I could start working on the portrait. But I'd rather get a little further on the body because I have to kind of change gears. So what I'm going to do now, I'm not going to film this because I've done it before. I'm going to mix up my automotive clear coat and I'm going to clear coat the gems and the um, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. the um, what do you call it? The trident. <laughs> Couldn't think of it <laughs> for the life of me. So get those nice and glossy. Those have to cure at least 20, you know, 12, 13 hours before we're gonna do the next step. So I'm gonna do that off camera. And then when I come back, we'll look at uh, maybe doing, finishing up the belt. All right, so I masked off the, I just masked it off. So it is using Silly Putty because masking is more accurate. Mask that off. And I'm gonna spray on that clear gold that I did on the torso, just slightly. So I don't wanna, I'm just gonna switch kind of shift this color a little bit to the brighter end of the gold spectrum. Give it a slight two-tone look. Just gonna mix it on a couple of white coats. This has, a little more, this has a little more yellow in it, but the other gold has a little more red in it. Not on camera as usual. Let this dry for five or ten minutes. Since it stays tacky for a while. And then we should have a slightly two-toned belt. So I'm gonna let this sit for a little while and then we'll take the tape off and see what it looks like. All right, so I'm not sure if you can tell on camera, but I can tell in person. So I got a little slightly yellower gold than on the inside. And then when we put this piece on, got a nice contrast. I think it goes on, I gotta look at the picture, I can't remember if it goes on this way or the other way. Anyway, so we got a nice slightly two-tone look there. So I'm digging that. So I'm going to go seal these and consider those pieces done. And then we'll move on to uh, probably work on the portrait tonight. If I get the portrait done tonight, then I'm in good shape. Then um, other than the little, little things here and there, uh, I got most of Aquaman done today, which is kind of my goal. So I'm going to go seal these and then uh, we'll come back with the next steps. 
All right, so on these jewels, what I've decided to do is I'm hand painting the rims right now with gold, and I'm using just cheap old Tester's enamel gold. Th these paints are perfect for hand brushing. Just doing it straight out of the bottle, and just painting the edge, just like this. And then when this dries, I'll go um, hit these with some gloss, and then um, I'll do a little black wash around the jewel. Uh, just to clean up any of my little mess ups. So that's it, it's pretty simple. I'm going to do the same thing on the necklace around the neck. So I just take a little bit of this paint and it brushes really nicely. It'll take a little while to dry it because it's in an enamel. The brush is a little, a little jinky. All my brushes are a little jinky. like that. And I'm going to brush a little bit on the side here too. I'm not sure how far down this goes into the chest. See this in camera. You can um, pretty much get away with one coat of this stuff if you're hand brushing just little small details. It's pretty good. And then I'm going to do um, the necklace around the neck too. That's going to take a while, so I won't do that on, on camera. Right. Uh, hand brush the chain and all the little rims around the stones. Alright, so I just got done hand painting this necklace. I sprayed the blue earlier and then I just went through and hand painted the gold and just went back and touched up with the blue so it's looking really good. I'm going to let that dry and I'll seal that with some gloss uh, after it's dried. And then um, I'll seal these guys too with gloss as they're looking good. And then after that, uh, we'll probably work on the portrait tonight. So uh, when I come back, I'll, have, I'll work on the portrait. All right, we're going to start working on the portrait. So I got this, uh, first I primed it in some Steinol Res, uh, what's the color, just light flesh. And then I put a couple light coats of Garage Kits, uh, Garage Kits at US Garage Kit flesh on it. I'm starting a little lighter than I normally do. And now I'm going to do my flecking. So I got my red in here craft paint my airbrush this is Santa red yeah we're gonna they're a little big 
right. Turn my air pressure up a little bit. I'm pumping the, the airbrush because the stuff doesn't like to come out very easily so just kind of do this and it comes out. Don't forget this all gets buried underneath. Let's just give the skin some texture. Pretty good. Get rid of that. That will be green. I'm going to do a quick clean out of the airbrush. I'm going to be crazy thorough. Airbrush and like a drop of paint. This color is called Twilight Blue. Oops. And turn the air pressure down until it starts to. Mountain little droplets. on until it looks relatively even. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, there's blue. Phone is buzzing. What's going on? Someone's texting me, who is that? Um, one second. Okay, now we're gonna do green, and the green I've got here is called Christmas Green. No particular reason, it's just kind of what I picked up. And this is a little harder to see. Right, sorry. Okay, so now I got green in here. And this doesn't show up as much as the other colors for some reason. Oops, crap. This is not wanting to come out. more water.
Yeah, the green never shows up as much, but that's okay. Just, just give me a slight tinge. Good. Now we'll do. We did red. We did green. We did blue. Now we're gonna do yellow. Actually, I'll do purple next. Clean out my airbrush real quick. Green really clogged up my airbrush for some reason. And then a little bit of water. This purple is called grape. Mix it up in my airbrush. Purple does a really good job of kind of tying this all together for some reason. Those red specks are a little big. Hopefully it'll just look like skin pores underneath the skin by the time I'm done. Okay. There's purple. And now we'll do yellow. We don't need a lot of this. I'm just mixing up my airbrush with a br in my airbrush with a brush. Okay, I'm just testing it here on my my towel. And the yellow really does. It. Has a hard time showing up, but it does make a difference. The air pressure is so low, I have to kind of, so I'm pumping the airbrush. Just seems to work better for me when I do that. Okay, looks good. We're gonna go with some browns. The only color I'm missing is white, so I'm gonna do it with a garage kit that U.S. paint. I'm out of white craft paint. Okay, we're gonna start with the darker brown. This is uh, espresso. Yeah, I 
barely put any paint in my airbrush because I'm hardly using any. on the key. Testing it over here off camera. Just gonna back up. Probably go relatively heavy with this one. This is where we kind of start burying the colors under some skin tone. Shading here. Just on the hairline stuff. See what that does. So I'm trying to get some shading put in there. Everything looks really punchy on the back of my camera. Going with a lighter brown. Okay, this is going to be a cocoa bean. This is kind of a caramel color. Some colors come out of the airbrush easier than the others. This one is one that comes out pretty easy. I have to pump the airbrush, it just comes out. Also, the thinning makes a big difference. I don't have like a specific ratio. I just kind of put a little water in my airbrush, put a little paint, and mix it up. I told her I'd be there at 7:30. So if you want to text her back and let her know you're going, get her. Okay, that color's done. He's looking a little dark right now, but don't worry. All right, all right. I'm recording. All right, 
And now we're going to go with a lighter color. This is going to be, this is actually called caramel. And after this we'll go with white and then we'll seal it and then we'll do our first light round of skin tone. It'll probably be that light African flesh kind of my go-to. This color is very subtle. Sorry, I forget to get in the middle of the frame. You guys can't see what I'm doing. Half the time, I'm sure my stuff's out of focus. All right, that's looking pretty good. All right, last we're gonna do some white. That's gonna be garage kiss OS. And my transparent pure white. I lost the lid of this model. The bummer. And for this, we're gonna turn this. He's got a lot of white freckles. So if anything, that'll just give me some highlights underneath everything. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I guess I don't need to seal this here. I can just go ahead and do the, because I don't need to. So I'm gonna use my, um, uh, I'm almost out of my light African flesh. That's like my go-to color. Or, Do I have left in here? Do I have any? Let's see. Ugh. I'm basically out. Shit. Okay. Well. What else do I got? Me. 
medium, that's too dark. Virgin, medium. Let's see what I got in here. I may have enough to mist on a little bit. Let's see. Alrighty. Well, I'm now officially out of light African flesh, which sucks because it's like my favorite color for Caucasian skin tone. So we'll have to do something else. Anyway, so I got that on there. I'm gonna go seal this now because then we're gonna go on. Uh, I'll start doing pastel work and layering that in, and it's like I usually do. So I'll come back after I seal it. Okay, so this is where we start adding shape to everything. Here he is after I've sealed them. It's looking a little dark in camera, but it's light, actually lighter than this. Uh, see a little some flat. Looks a little shiny. I may have to hit them again. Let's see if I dry it down a little bit. That helps. Okay, so we got our my typical burnt sienna, burnt sienna tint, and raw umber tint which is a kind of uh, highlights so let's get out uh, my favorite brushes for these a little skinny tone brush set here I basically use the same brush all the time a little chisel brush uh, this guy right here sometimes I use a little teeny tiny one to get into really small areas I really like the chisel brushes. They're easy to blend things with. Okay. So we're gonna go with the shadow first. Oops. That's what the. Uh... Okay, so everyone who asked me, these are pan pastels. You can get them on Amazon. I get them at my local hobby store. And um, they're awesome. Pan pastels. I'm gonna say it four or five times. Pan pastels. So everyone who asks me, what pastels are you using? Pan pastels. I even show it to you really close in the camera. Well, that one you can't read very well because it's too bright. Okay. They're not real, They're not super cheap, but um, I'd rather use these than the uh, little craft ones. I, I used to use the, the the ones you get at, like Hobby Lobby, but um, the stick ones but uh, I was having to do my pastel work two and three times because they don't as soon as you go to uh, top coat them they kind of disappear so I'll try to do this remember to do this in camera so again we go in here and we hit all the shadows first hairline and I like to dab them these tend to stick a little bit better It's gonna look really weird until the very end. They always do. Blow off the excess, make sure there's no spit on your lips.
can look really super contrasty for a while. That, dab, 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 dab. It's going to dry a little shinier than I want it to. I'd probably put the flat coat on a little too wet. When you do that, it dries to more of like a semi flat than flatter matte. So I'll put it on a little bit drier next time and I won't have to work it so hard to get these to stick. I get the wrinkles. I have a smaller brush that's actually probably a little bit better for this. And the ear is kind of the hardest thing to do, personally. Maybe a bigger brush down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. The chin line. that chisel and really blend it out pretty nicely. I think I'll be ready to go seal them and then do the next round of pastels. Okay. So it's looking super punchy. That's okay. I'm going to build up the contrast and then bury it so it looks pretty natural. I don't even do shading with an airbrush on, on faces. 
I just feel like I have way more control with pastels. Okay, make sure I got them. Let's turn them in the light a little bit, make sure I got all the shadows taken care of. So I'm going to go put on um, some more flat cut. I'm going to spray a little bit drier this time. And I should dry it with a flatter surface. I'll come back after it's dry. Okay, so we uh, sealed that. You know, the hair dryer. Man, it looks really freaking <laughs> on the back of my camera. Now we're going to go with this. Uh, uh, what is this? Sorry, I'm trying to read it without burnt. Sorry, it's broken. Uh, shit. Ah, burnt sienna tint. Sorry, I was, it's kind of you can see it's flaky, so I didn't want to tip it over and lose all this, uh, <clears throat> all that pastel. So <clears throat> this is kind of like, <clears throat> sorry, this is kind of give you like my midtone. So I basically do the same steps whenever I do portraits, and what really determines the end result is the base coat. So um, because again, this is all very thin layers and stuff. So now I'm gonna go in here. And basically hit the high areas with this. And use the bigger brush. Just tapping it. Blending it in. Like such. So I'll do like another does before. Let me do one side of the face. And then we'll look at the difference. I started the high part and then I just tap and I draw it out. And just blend it in like that. Again, it's gonna look really it's gonna look really contrasty for a while. So I have to um, very lightly mist some color on top of this. This work done. Again, I love this chisel brush because it just naturally puts more pressure in the center of the brush and then less pressure towards the tips of the bristles, and it just makes blending these so much easier. I mean, it looks like it's airbrushed on. All right, for the ears again, I kind of like do a dry brush thing where I just use the, the edge of the brush. Okay, so right side has that Cena tint and left side doesn't pretty big difference especially in camera it looks really really crazy punchy and I'll just do the same thing over here
Applying dab, applying dab. Pretty good. I'm going to feathers up and under the eyes just a little bit to reduce the circles. And I am going to put a little bit on the lower eyelid. Okay, so that's what he looks like right now. So we're gonna go seal this, and then we'll do the highlight color, and then we'll do some airbrushing, just some mist coats of uh, transparent tones to kind of blend it all together. I'll have to come up with something other than my light African flesh color that I really like to use. Because I'm out. That sucks. I gotta do the ear over here too. I just have to remember to do the ears. I always forget the ears. It's always a good idea to go back and forth between both sides and make sure that they look similar. I got a little too much of this on here. On this side, so I'm gonna kind of do the same thing over here. All right, I'm gonna go see this and then I'll come back. All right, okay, so the next one we do, we do a raw umber tint and this is almost white. It's got a little bit of brownish tone to it. And this we just hit on the very uh, high spots. I'm actually gonna use a smaller brush. So like the tip of the nose. Now I'll use a medium chisel brush to blend that out. And it's gonna look really punchy. Until I um, start misting on some transparent tones. Again, I'm just gonna put right on the, right on the high spot of the cheek. Even use what's just left on the brush and do a little bit. Like that. 
just, I just use what was on the brush. Pretty good here. You can see I kind of wiped some of off, some off, some of that off of my hand there, because I didn't want it 100% down here in the neck. Blend this out a little bit as you go. Okay, now it looks even way punchier. So we're going to seal this, and this is basically the groundwork. Again, lots of lots of time just getting what's going to be underneath everything. And then we're gonna um, layer on some uh, airbrush some skin tones on. So let me go see this and come back. Okay, so the first color I got here is GarageKids.us Bronze Flesh. And I'm gonna back this way off. i be way off the camera here. And we're gonna miss this on pretty lightly. Be all I do for bronze flesh. I actually tied it all together pretty well. Shoot, I may not do anything else. We've got a little bit of, um, if anything, it needs to be warmed up a little bit. What I'll do, but I'll do my washes and stuff too. Um, Got these transparent colors I never use. Let's see what these look like. This is pale flesh. Okay, it's got a little bit of orange to it. So this is I just put a little bit of semi -tra or transparent pale flesh in here. I'm gonna go back way off. Good. Getting somewhere. I may go back in with some pastels on top of this. Uh, just my medium. I think. Yeah, sometimes I go back and do more pastels. Alright, let me see what else we can do. Do. Don't want to do garage kit flesh. That's just too. It's too. Um. It's too dead. Maybe I need a little gold somewhere. That may 
do it. Okay, I got a little bit of gold toner. This is a transparent color also. I got it back way off. I'm going to seal this. I'm going to do a little more pastel work because I'm getting there. I think I may have, may be a little too, um, I don't know. I may be to the point where I'm going to do a little more pastel. Then I may have to put the hair in because the hair will really help me look at the skin tone. So I'm going to seal this. We'll do a little more pastels and then take a look at it. Okay, so I'm going to go back in with my kind of mid-tone pastels using earlier. number a little bit. It's going in very lightly. I'm taking it off of my hand. Hey! Sorry, my phone rang. So again, I'm just going in here real light, kind of hitting the high spots again. After I seal this, this may be kind of where I leave it, I don't know. Kind of look at my own skin tone. I'm a, I'm a little bit on the yellow side, personally. He should be a little more sun-kissed a little more on the tan side, so I don't mind if he goes a little a little warm. bugging me and it's in the sculpt is this line right here it's, it's sculpted very very hard um, so I'm going to soften it up a little bit that's what's kind of bugging me I think I went in there pretty hard with the shadow and it's like the sculpt the sculpt line is really hard right there for some reason Okay, it's probably looking really punchy in camera again, but I'm kind of digging this. So I'm going to go seal this again, and then I think I'll put the hair in. Um, and go from there. I may do a little after this because this is kind of a pale color I may do a real light pass with a gold toner again kind of wish I had a 
I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna make it my own little pastel. I wish I had, what I want is a an in between color between this and um, this. I want those two mixed. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I don't have any clean. <laughs> I don't have any clean uh, palettes. They're all dirty. I've got like 20 palettes, and they're all dirty. I need to uh, clean them. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take some of this. Put that in there. Take some of this. Put that in there. So I'm just gonna make up my own color. Yeah, so now I kind of got a mid-tone between these two. Alright, see what that does. It's actually a really nice skin tone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a transition between the shadow and that color I just put on. is a little too punchy. So I'm doing is I'm, I'm I'm hitting that highlight again, but I'm using the color just mixed up. Yeah, and going to the shadow just a little bit. Just to soften the transition. And that looks way more natural. Still looks really punchy in camera, but much softer uh, shadows here in the cheeks. That's where it was bugging me. I think everything else looks pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna seal this. I say that I keep messing with it. softening some of these shadows a little bit. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to go seal this, and then I think I'm going to put the hair in. I'm kind of digging this. So uh, I'll come back. Okay, for his hair, it's, it's, in the comic it's really yellow, but it's, you know, it's blonde, so I don't want yellow hair. It looks weird. Um, so we're going to go with a, a bright blonde. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to base coat the hair in this uh, parasite brown. Um, I tried to use this on the the thing, but it was a little too red. But I think it'll be a really good base coat um, for this hair color. So, not much to it. It's just time consuming. So I won't record the whole process, but just brush it on. This is the Vallejo, so this will cover in one coat. And this has been sealed, so if I mess up I can just kind of take it off the skin I don't know how Vallejo does it but they make a paint that covers in one coat it's pretty pretty amazing a lot of pigment in their paints that's why whenever <clears throat> I go to thin them, I have to put a lot of thinner in. More than other paints. I 
not gonna record all this because this this is actually very a very slow process for me. It takes me a long time to base coat hair. So I think you get the idea. So we're gonna go through and do this and then seal it and come back. Okay, so I base coated the hair and I also went ahead and base coated the eyes and sealed this. And the skin tone looks really good. So it's amazing what a difference adding the hair does and just putting the whites of the eyes in. I sealed this with matte, the flat coat, but I put it on really wet because I like the skin to dry to it, just a, little, a slight sheen. Um, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna uh, dry brush the hair. Um, so it's gonna be kind of like a, a reddish blonde we're gonna go for. So I'm gonna put some of this, oops, shit. I drop them. So what I've got now is I'm gonna use some filthy brown. Uh, Vallejo. I'm almost out of this color. Come on. This has got a little bit of a. I don't know, this is kind of. I'll put that there. Let's tip that upside down so the paint comes down to the bottom. Need a paper towel. I need a flat brush. We're gonna use this guy right here. Nice flat, stiff brush. And we'll put some paint on it. Take most of it off. And we're gonna start building up our highlights. So what I usually do is I go against the grain this way for a little bit and then I will lighten it up overall by going with the hairs. But I like to go against the hairs first to kind of get that initial highlight established. And I will go one more level after this color. The bright highlights. So this should be pretty com comic accurate for the hair. And I'm not done with the skin yet. I still need to go and do the wash on the cheeks and in the eyes. I do a little purple in the eyes, sockets. So we're not completely new completely done with the skin yet, but I am happy with where it is. So I won't get Aquaman 100% done today, but I'll get most of it done. Also, I have to go look at the packaging because I don't think I don't think I can glue him together and put him back in the box. Um, I may have to go out and look at the packaging because I believe the way he was packed, the torso was in one box and the legs were in another. I think I can glue the belt on to the torso, which I'd like to do, but I think I have to keep the legs and the torso separate, which kind of sucks. I wish I could glue them together. I mean, he fits well, so I mean, it's no big deal, but it's not the end of the world. The beard in the um, other areas, I was get a smaller brush. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go with the hairs a little bit. 
and this will lighten up everything just a little bit. I don't want to cover up the base color. I do want to shift it a little bit. This, and also this will just keep adding to the highlights I already put on. That's why I go against the hair first and then come with the hair. there that time. Is that right? pretty good. We get a smaller brush and we'll work on the beard, goatee, and the eyebrows. Kind of same thing. Come here real light. this brush. They're kind of hard to get without getting a bunch of paint on the skin. I can always wipe it off. Kind of come this way a little bit. Try to get the tips of those hairs nice and bright.
I'll have to wipe up, clean up the goatee a little bit. I got a little this paint on the skin, not the end of the world. So on the on the beard, I take this past the the sculpt just a little bit. Kind of helps blend it in. Okay, now I just need to go through and clean up any paint. Like I got some of the ear, which usually happens. Got some on the lip. Getting on this ear. Okay, I think we're pretty good. I'm gonna go back over the hair one more time. Probably off camera again. Okay, I'm gonna go seal this, and then we're gonna go up one more highlight level. All right, so I sealed that uh, again, and now what I did is I added some white to my previous color. I had some other colors out here that I'd use, but I think I'm just gonna add white to that other color, and I got this kind of bright. I may add some more. Oh, well, this is pretty bright. Yeah. And I got this really bright color here. Let's see what this does. I just use a flat part of my brush. Exactly doing what I want to do, but since I started it, we're gonna finish it. Just using the flat part of my brush, I just want to hit the very tops of everything. I think what I want is more white in this, but I need to use. I was using the garage case that I use uh, white, but it's not doing what I want it to do. So I'm going to add a little of this uh, Masters acrylic to it. I kind of want a straw yellow. That's what I'm going for. It makes a little bit more up, I think. I 
that's the color I need right there. Okay, and I got this kind of straw yellow going on. I wanted it pretty bright so it dries down a little bit. I'm very lightly going to kind of go this way a little bit. in there. This one really just going real slow with this color. It's moving it up a little bit at a time. It's really hard to go backwards from here. You can, you just got a base coat. This one, there's one here in the sculpt that I don't like. It's this guy right here. It's very kind of random. I may go back and fix, dry brush some more of the base coat back on top of it because I'm not liking the way that one hair looks. It's bugging me. Everything else I love. This one hair right here. It's really weird. Try and work on the beard a little bit. Beer sculpt's really good. I really like it. Come in and do the mustache. Yeah. Too much paint. Let's do the eyebrows first.
The mustache sculpt is a little soft. I wish it was a little more defined. It's a little hard to kind of tell where it is on the face too. When it comes down here and it meets the the beard. Getting a little bit on the lip here. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna um, go back real quick and try to fix that one hair that I don't like. Oh, I've got some base coat right here. So I got some base coat. So you can kind of blend it in a little bit. I just need to kind of paint it. I got the hair dryer real quick. back and let's make it look a little bit better than it did. I'm not going to make it so bright. That's why I didn't. I was trying to make it really kind of stand out. I don't want to do that. Okay, I'm just going to leave it. bright highlight level almost pure white let's see what that does just hit a very select few high spots from about there with the hair. Because even this like almost pure white will dry down quite a bit.
sorry I'm off camera again I kind of get <laughs> I keep wanting to bring it closer to my face This last highlight was really good. It kind of gave everything a little more shape. I keep futzing with it. It actually looks pretty good. Should just learn to stop. <laughs> but I keep and that's what happens when I get too much paint on there. Alrighty. I think that's pretty good. I like the hair. It's nice and golden, brownish, white, blondish, whatever. Is it not yellow? That's what I didn't want. Is it? I didn't want yellow hair. It's kind of a reddish, red blonde. You can just keep building up highlights until you're going nuts, and that's basically what I'm doing right now. I'm just cuts in with it. Okay, so I think the hair's done. I'm gonna seal that, and then we'll work on the eyes. Uh, actually, we'll finish up the skin. We'll do the washes on the skin, the cheeks, the lips, and the uh, eye sockets, and then we'll. Um, the eyes, and depending on what time it is, we'll have this. Right, we'll have the portrait wrapped up tonight, I think. If I can stop messing with the hair. So I'm gonna go seal this, and then we'll uh, do the washes on the skin. All right, we're kind of in the home stretch here on the head. I want to put the eyes in. Uh, they provided decals. Yeah, so yay for me because that's what I do. So I put them on, I sealed them. I just did a little waterline of kind of dark brown uh, to kind of give them some more definition. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, a little light purple wash in the um, eye socket. Ooh, that's way more paint than I need. And the um, I need the eyes. Get really watery. Purple. And I get some q tips. brush. Alright, no big deal. Came right off. Alright, let's put those to the side. I was trying some stuff with some pigments that wasn't working very well, so I stopped it. <laughs> Where's that go to? I got lit, I don't know what it is. Anyway. Alright, so I got some really watery purple. Kind 
kind of went up in the eyelet a little bit there, so let me go. Yeah, like two or three times. Just kind of staining. Take it off. Take it off. John Allred suggested I do this, and it does. It's very subtle, but it gives a little bit of nice kind of tonality to the eye sockets. pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of red on the cheeks. Same thing, really watery. Do it a few times. A Q tip to you see a real a line. Really just kind of one of the apples of the cheeks. Got a slightly damp Q-tip here.
to the other side a little bit. You want to dab this off while it's still wet. You're just every time you do a little bit, you're staining it just a little bit more. Just keep adding a little bit of time until I get the look I want. And it'll show up more after I seal it. It's kind of hard to see it right now. Let's do the lips. Good. I took the detail, uh, wash one of the details really nicely. It's nice, see all the little creases and everything. You just put it real thin, you don't want to look like he's got lipstick on. Spill it up. are done. Looks like good. I'm going to go in there with a little of this brown wash. I love those brown washes one of them to kind of kill a little bit of the red. because I kind of killed the red too much. It's a balancing act. I see the redness in his cheeks a little bit. Sorry, again, that was probably out of focus. A little purple on the eyes. Yeah, it's looking good. Need to blow dry this lips. It may be a little too. I wait for it to dry. I'm 
Maybe the purple a little bit more under the eyes. So we got a long day on this guy, about 13 hours. Got a little purple wash in the, a little bit in the waterline of the eyes. I'm just gonna go back in here this brown and just kind of kill it a little bit. So I got just a little bit of the brown wash on my brush. Kind of just wet blending the lips a little bit. Got a little bit of a highlight flesh color here. a big difference. I got a little tab of yellow here that I missed cleaning up the mustache. I'm going to try to blend it back in with some of this flesh tone. I think I can do it. Do it slowly. dries down and it looks good. Okay, so I'm going to finish up doing all these little touch-ups on this thing and then we'll seal it and then we'll come back and look at it. It's just about there, I think. I'm just going to fuss with it a little bit here and there. I gotta mess with this lip a little bit. It's not doing what I want to do. 
So I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'll come back after I seal it. Alrighty, so I just glossed the eyes, which means the portrait is done. And I just put it on the torso to see what it looks like. And I think that looks pretty badass. So, um, yeah, he's looking really good. I um, think I'm gonna, uh, so I'm not gonna call his work in progress done, so because tomorrow I can do assembly. I can put some of the, like, I can put the jewels in after those are dried. I gotta try to fix that necklace. I'm gonna glue it down and try to glue the piece on the back. Uh, like I said, I don't think I can glue them together, but I can take a picture, at least try to get them together and take a picture together and send, send to my client. But uh, I think the portrait looks really good on this uh, body. I like it with the lighter hair rather than the darker hair that I see on the on the uh, production pieces. And the, slight, the little two-tone belt looks good. And the collar, I think I'm going to just leave it because it's just kind of got that gold look to it. So I don't think I need to do anything to it. It looks pretty good. So there you go. Um, tomorrow I'll do some assembly and then I'll call this work in progress and done. All right, so we're gonna wrap up this work in progress by doing some assembly. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these gems and put these in. I'm gonna just kind of dry fit it first. And if there's any touch ups on the edges for the gold, I can do that once they're in. I may just be able to pressure foot fit these of the paint so I'm just gonna get that a good push yeah and that's in so I'm just gonna um, brush touch the edges a little bit with the gold paint for that guy I'll have to do the same thing on this guy probably I should have painted uh, further down the edge with that gold but I don't want to do it now since I've already got them see that's stay in pressure fit yep sure will that one goes in further than this one does and then we got this guy here let's see now I've never gotten this one in before so I'm gonna a little trick you can use. I don't have, they make these actually these are really cool little special tools. It's basically a stick with a little bit of oh semi-adhesive tackiness to it. It's perfect for picking up little parts. Maybe you can do the same thing with blue tack. So I just got a piece of blue tack on the end of this brush. If I can pick this up. Put this in. It only goes one way. Okay, so it goes this way. There we go. Now I've kind of got it in there. Okay, I'm just going to pressure fit it and I'll touch up the edges again. What's in the enamel gold? Let's do that real quick. Same gold I used on these yesterday. I'm just gonna do a little touch up on the edges here. So, yeah, now this this gold paint is like super reflective. It's, it's really these little cheap enamel testers enamel paints are actually really good. And once that's dry, I'll brush I'll brush on some um, gloss coat sealer. A little piece of A little piece of fleck that came off from pushing that in. And we're going to touch up this guy a little bit. 
the thing about enamel paints is that they just they take forever to fully cure like days so that's why a lot of model users don't airbrush them they're great for little things like this little hand painting things but like I would never use them to airbrush large areas because they just take forever to cure but that's one nice thing about and they're they're more durable than other paints I'm surprised that gem doesn't go down further but it doesn't I'm not gonna force it hang with that with that one They're definitely not going to come out. They're in there really well. Okay. There we go. Gems are in. Now this necklace that keeps breaking. This fiasco. Pretty annoying. Also, I painted um, yesterday the two chains that came with this. Now, I think the if, if, you've, if you've ever tried to paint a, a chain, it's nearly impossible to get everything coated evenly and everything. So I did it anyway, but I'm going to advise my client that if you want to use a chain, <coughs> actually I might just go buy them. It's just to go buy like a brass chain. Two. They're just, whoop, let's knock the camera over. There's this really long one here that's supposed to wrap around the, um, now this one actually turned out pretty good. Um, I did a, a candy color to, to kind of match him. He's a, it's a little darker, but you can never get it all even in the same color, but that's okay. I think on this, this is supposed to like wrap around the trident and wrap around him. And then he's got another one that goes around his neck and the same thing. Um, you just never get it all painted evenly. So, it may look okay. I don't know. It's supposed to go around his neck, I guess. It's really long. So, I'm not sure if he's going to use that or not. I probably wouldn't put this on. I think it's maybe a little too much. Who knows? But, anyway, I painted those yesterday. And, again, painting chain is nearly impossible. It's too bad they just didn't provide a um, plated chain. I mean, they're you're cheap, so um, I may just go do that. All right, now this necklace. So this is going to be challenging because I've got three pieces now. This thing keeps breaking. It's so fragile. So this goes on this side and it meets up with the necklace uh oh I dropped it don't roll over it so this necklace the painting turned out really nice but I wish they would have uh, made it out of wire or put made it a little thicker and put a wire in it This, nope, this comes on this side. Again, I may have some touch ups to do once I get this in. I think I can just get in with a pressure fit, too. That's as far as it's going to go. 
have to do some brush touch-ups here. Okay. I don't want to try to take it out because if I try to take it out, it'll break again. great from the front <laughs> so this is where I got my debacle so um, like I said this thing broke I wish this went down further okay so now I gotta try to do as far as it's going to go in. I think if I heat this up a little bit. Sorry. See what I'm doing, but I'm trying to get this to line up. Okay, so I'm going to try to glue that right there. What I might do is do a little bit of super glue. And then brush on some epoxy around the outside edge. So I'm just going to hold this here for a second. Like that sets up. There's like no surface area. third hand I would hit that with some kicker okay so we're gonna do 
actually lining up pretty well. Got it on. So now what I'm going to do is going to let that dry. And then I'm going to take some epoxy and brush it over the joints. And just, I'll make the, the wire a little bit thicker. And then once it's dry, I can paint over that. But I think as long as you don't touch this back here, it's fine. Even if, even if it wasn't broken before, if you were to grab this with this on here like this, it would, it would break. So, uh, I'm going to hit this with a hair dryer. Just to dry that kicker. Now I'm going to go in with that gold again and touch up, touch this up just a little bit. This is going to be a long work in progress, but it'll cover basically painting of Aquaman. That one looks good. Up here, really small. Surprise how well it lines up to the uh, jewel on the neck. It meets up perfectly. All right, that's looking pretty good. Okay. So now I'm going to take a little epoxy, a little five minute epoxy, just need a little bit. And that super glue that I got on there, let me close this jar up before I spill gold paint everywhere. I need just the teeniest, tiniest amount of epoxy. Actually, I should mix this up on. I'm not gonna be able to mix it because it's such a small amount. Uh, I need a. Yeah, I'll just use this. I'll tear it off when I'm done. All right, so I'm mixing up some five-minute epoxy, and I'm gonna coat the outside of that necklace on the back. with it and then once it's dry I'll um, just go over some gold paint and since this is such a small amount of epoxy it'll take a while to cure the more you mix up the faster it kicks off because it heats up as it cures and with the more volume you have the it gets hotter faster so it kicks off faster this is a really small amount so it'll take it a while to cure Put it on. Alright, so 
and just take a, a little bit of this. I'm just gonna so this should help prevent this from this epoxy. It should help prevent these joints from breaking if it gets bumped or anything. That's my goal here is to kind of just. That's gonna be the chain will be a little thicker there, but that's okay. I'd rather have a little bump there. And have this secured pretty well. And you don't see you don't see this um, anyway. It's on the back, but I'm trying to make it look, look as good as we can. So the great thing about epoxy, someone's asked me um, on my Facebook on a post if epoxy's stronger than super glue. It's way stronger than super glue, and part of the reason is because it's not brittle. So super glue dries really really hard, like rock hard. Well, it makes it brittle, so. Um, if you were to bump it or anything, the chances of it breaking are much higher than uh, epoxy because epoxy's got some flex to it. So epoxy's way stronger and uh, resists any bumping or anything like that. Okay, so that's done. Uh, that's it really for assembly. Oh, I am going to glue the belt on to the torso too. I decided I'm going to do that. So, um... I could use the epoxy. I just mixed up. Do I have enough? I don't know. Let's see. I don't know. I don't have a whole lot. Yeah, I'll just mix up a little bit of the epoxy in the cut that I started already. I'm glue the belt on. For this, this isn't a structural thing, it's just a yeah. so basically. Um, yeah, I have to I have to pack the torso and the legs separately, unfortunately. So, but it's okay because it's got a nice key. And um, ah shit. Oh, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I had to take a phone call. I forgot what I was doing. Actually, I was working on um, Aquaman. Oh, I, was, I epoxied the belt on. Put him on the torso. Or on the leg, so the the weight of that will hold that together while the epoxy dries. So the only thing left I got to paint for Aquaman himself is the trident. So I've been struggling with what I want to do with this. I thought about doing, trying to do a candy, a gold chrome. Um, what's keeping me from wanting to do that is how fragile it is. Um, so what I think I'm gonna do is I think I might. Uh, I think I just might replicate what I have on um, Aquaman himself. So I'm going to base it in that gun chrome, then do the clear metallic yellow, and then do some orange shading on it. Because in the artwork, <coughs> from what I can tell, I know it's actually different in the artwork. It doesn't have any orange on it, so I may just do the metallic gold. Anyway, I got I got to think about this. Um, I could do I don't gonna do I'm gonna do gold. I'm gonna do gun chrome first, and uh, I'll come back. All right, so I got all the pieces 
uh, coated in the, the gun chrome. And now what I have mixed up in my cup is um, I put in a bottle of Mr. Color number 48 clear yellow. And then added just a little bit of number 106, the clear orange. So I kind of got this nice warm clear color. And I think we're just going to mist this on and build it up. And I got to do each piece evenly. So this is a clear candy again. So I like to do this. We'll do one. Small angles. Gonna build this up one cut at a time. It'll take a while, but what you gotta do. That first coat you really don't even see, it's so light. Tubes are actually one of the hardest parts of paint because <laughs> you'll be able to hold them. I'm at the same time. Long one's the hardest to get it even. That's one light color and everything. A slightly wetter coat. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Change the angle of my clip. best to keep it evenly coated. Yeah, this is a good color. A little lower, we'd like to put some of that orange in there, but this yellow is really bright yellow, and I wanted it more towards the brass end of the color spectrum. So I add a little bit of orange to warm it up a little bit.
pretty good. Some of the light areas, i go back and kind of hit those again. Constantly rotating into the light to see where I got. So now, um, <clears throat> one thing I did on the production paint is they left the tips of this lighter. So when I do the next few coats, I'm not going to go all the way to the top. So I'm gonna do the uh, second coat and I'll come back and do the third. All right, so I'm gonna do the third, ooh, shit, the third coat and on this I'm not gonna go all the way to the tip. Um, so it's a little lighter. So I'll just do this part on camera and then I'll do the third coat on the other pieces off camera. And then that may be pretty good. I decide if I want to do a gloss, high gloss on this. That's a really pretty color. And then they go back in with just some of the orange and do some shading. I don't know. Actually, no, I think I'll just leave it. I don't want it to go orange. I want to kind of keep it this color. Good. All right, so I'm going to do the third coat on everything else. And then I'll look at it, and then if it looks good, I'll leave it. If not, I'll do a fourth coat. So once it's done, I'll come back. Okay, so I went back and did one more coat, and I think this is looking really good. So I'm going to just dry really well, <coughs> and then I'm going to seal it. And I think I'm just going to do um, Krylon gloss. So it'll give me like a semi gloss. It won't be like the super, super shiny, but. Um, the Krylon gloss will be a nice um, finish on this piece. So we're going to have that dry. I'll seal it. And then um, we'll call this work in progress done because that's everything for Aquaman. Um, the next one I'll do, I'll start working on sea creatures and I think I'll do the work of first. So thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Bye. Well, I realized I forgot to show you what he looks like all put together. So <laughs> here he is. And uh, right now the trident isn't touching the ground because he's not in the base. I've got him kind of propped up on this bottle. But I'm going to bring my exposure down a little bit. There we go. But he looks really good. Um, super happy with everything. Skin tone looks amazing. Super really happy with that. Every portrait I do gets a little bit better. So. Come over this way. Yeah, really, really sharp. So I sent a picture to my client yesterday, kind of like this. He didn't it had the trident at the time, but um, or the jewels on, but he said it looks good. So that's Aquaman. He's he's finished. And then the next work in progress will be um, one of the creatures. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.